All right. Hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from San Diego. And I'm joined right now by Julie Broad, who is somewhere between Los Angeles and Las Vegas. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Accurate. <laughs> uh, yeah. And Julie is the foundation of Book Launcher. She's a uh, number one best-selling author from Amazon, uh, international uh, book award winner, recipient of the Beverly Hills Book Award for best sales book, an entrepreneur, successful real estate uh, investor, and you and you founded uh, Book Launchers to help busy entrepreneurs and professionals build their brand and boost their sales using book publishing. So we're going to talk about today. Can having a, a book, an impactful book, help you in, in shortening your sales cycle and creating that credibility and maybe uh, giving you a competitive advantage over the people you're competing with? So, so let's just start off, Julie. Uh, you know, I, I read somewhere uh, a stat that in 2018, there was 1.6 million independently published books, right? And so, and obviously that's probably, I mean, probably like three million more people wrote books during the pandemic <laughs> <laughs> very true it was a, it was a good year for our business <laughs> yeah. so so you know given the volume of books that are produced and all that uh, uh, why is it still a good idea for somebody to consider uh, to consider writing and publishing a book yeah I mean there's there's kind of a couple things I want to comment on so the first mm -hmm. thing is a lot of people self-publish, but they do it in a way that will never make their book stand out. So they mm -hmm. haven't really invested in a book like a traditionally published author and a traditional publisher would invest in the book. So you still have tremendous opportunity because even though you hear that number, 1.6 million, how's my book gonna stand out? You have to remember a huge chunk of those haven't really invested in creating a great book. The second piece is still to this day, if you look around your industry, you're going to see people with, you know, all the same degrees, right? All the same education, similar experience. What can differentiate you? A book, right? It's so much, in many cases, I think it's better than a degree because it positions you as the expert on that subject that you've written about in a way that, you know, no sort of education or even experience can do. So that's, and when you're selling, especially, that's really powerful to be the expert in something and sell that something. Uh, that's a great combo. Yeah, and I think, and probably when you work with people, this is probably the first place that where you start is really making sure that they have a good understanding of what the subject is, what how they're going to establish some kind of authority, uh, you know, an authority, authoritative voice. Um, so, I mean, there needs to be obviously some preparation. And I think that's probably what you're referring to as well. And probably a lot of people just throw out books because they can, you know, and you know that old adage, just because you can doesn't mean you should. But mm -hmm. what, what process do you go through with people to ensure that they have thought it through, that they have, that they can actually show some authority, that they can actually provide something that's of value? Yeah, I mean, one of the big challenges is traditionally published authors have had to create a marketing plan before they wrote their book and sold it. Uh, most self-published authors get inspira inspiration and they sit down, they write their book, and then when it's done, they go, oh, how am I going to sell this? So yeah. our process right from the start is focused really deeply on, okay, who is the reader for this book and how are you helping them in a different way than they you know, tried or you know, what they've done before to achieve kind of that outcome that they're pursuing. And that happens at the beginning. And we're really getting clear on that and also coming up with a clear hook. So what is that outcome and how are you different? And that's the backbone of the book from the beginning. Uh, and that is something very few authors actually do or do well. Um, and part of that, some people just don't see what's cool or unique about themselves. So, you know, getting help with that can really make a big difference. Or, or they also think some of the things that aren't as important to somebody else are deeply emotionally important to them, but it's actually not something the reader needs to know. So, you know, that's, that's really where we start is developing the whole book with marketing in mind. And then throughout the entire process, we're considering that reader, you know, is the reader going to want to grab that cover it doesn't matter that your wife or your husband thinks that cover is good <laughs> it matters whether the reader is going to click on it or buy it off the shelf so it's yeah. that whole kind of mentality that we've baked into the process and that i think a lot of people miss when they're writing a book especially when they're self-publishing yeah absolutely especially because your family is going to expect free books so <laughs> you, you, yeah. you hit it like a lot of people think their family's going to buy their book but your family's the first one to say oh can we get my free copy signed <laughs> 
exactly. But I think that's a really good point, though, you raised, because I think this is where a lot of uh, self-publishing does fall down, is that is that people go and they maybe they find, you know, they find a service and they, they do the math and they say, OK, it's going to cost me X amount to publish this book. But they don't think about what am I going to spend on marketing and how am I going to do the marketing piece? And I think it then surprises people that suddenly, you know, they have their book and it, you know, it doesn't sell itself because nothing does really. Uh, mm -hmm. And and they realize now they have to market it, but they never really put the funds aside to uh, dedicated the funds to that. It was just to the getting the book out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And one of the, I mean, you're right. A lot of people think you put it on Amazon and it sells. <laughs> and, yeah. you know, I always tell people the hardest part wasn't writing the book. The hardest part is getting people to read the book, tell other people and continue to sell it from there. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, books don't sell themselves. They do need a lot of work. And, you know, there's, there was kind of a couple thoughts I thought on that, but one of them is really thinking about the discoverability of your book. So when you're, when you've had that title, cause like this is the other thing that happens, people fall in love with their title. Um, but you have to think about keywords. You have to think about, are there other books with this title already? Um, because you can have two books with the same title. They can't be, they can't be copyrighted. Um, it's only if they're trademarked. Uh, and so you really want to do your research before you fall madly in love with a title and, and say, this is my title, because you may be setting yourself up for failure and wonder why I have this amazing story and everybody will benefit from it, but nobody's buying it. And, you know, that's the disconnect that comes up with a lot of these things. Yeah. And I think and another great point that you touched on there, because I think also when people think of books, they tend to think traditionally. I mean, even though bookstores are pretty much gone, we still tend to think of a book as a physical thing and all of that. And, you know, it's great when you get your boxes full of books and not so great when they sit there for years, but that's uh, <laughs> that's another thing. But but what I'm saying is they don't necessarily think about what you just said. Is that you know the majority of book is probably going to be consumed digitally these days. You know, uh, but the marketing of it is going to be almost like 100% digital. So you have to think about things like um, SEO and, and and keywords, and you have to get, think about where I where is my audience online that I can pitch the book to. Yeah, and actually, interesting fact for you about it because we only do nonfiction, so I can't speak mm -hmm. to fiction yeah, yeah. but um, we're we're actually seeing most of our clients in launch selling 60 to 75 percent of their books in print um, mm -hmm. so it's a, it, it is this funny thing where people think it's consumed digitally uh, but you're actually seeing a tremendous appetite in the nonfiction space still for print but like you said everybody's buying that online and it really comes down to you know online marketing that a lot of people have been doing for years it comes down to that email newsletter list it comes down to your website your podcast connections um, if you're speaking and that really sets you up for for marketing success more than anything uh, you know it, and, and amazon ads you know that's one way that if you don't have your platform you can, you can sell books but <laughs> yeah yeah no no absolutely absolutely um so if somebody if somebody is considering and thinking okay this sounds like me i think i have a book inside me i think i have a good idea what what's what should what's the starting point for them before they like reach out to somebody like you what which homework should they do yeah, there's a couple things. And, you know, at the end, I can kind of reference an ebook yeah. guide to, to walk them through it. But when I talk to people, the first thing I really want to understand is what their goals are for writing the book, like what they actually are thinking is going to happen after the book comes out. And then really, who is their reader? And if they tell me it's everyone, I know they're set up for marketing failure. I mean, this is a sales podcast, so <laughs> it's pretty obvious. If you think your market's everyone, it's no one. Uh, but, you know, I really want them to give me something other than a demographic, because the other thing that's very problematic is if somebody says, oh, it's women between the ages of 30 or 50, or, you know, it's men over 70, you know, that doesn't actually tell me who they are and how we're going to sell this book to them. So we want to like immediately dive in. And if somebody can tell me precisely who their reader is, then, and they, and they have some expertise in that area. Okay. We're good. Now it's a matter of, okay, what is the specific problem you want to help solve? What if, even if you're telling a story, what's the outcome for that reader? It's not just inspiration. It's what are they now inspired to go and do, or to now think, or to whatever it is. So it's getting really specific. And so if you come to us with that packaged up, like the idea, that outcome and that clarity of reader, then we can help you create a great book. Yeah, no, that's great advice. Uh, and, and again, like I said, uh, I mean, if you're a business person and you're thinking of writing a book, then obviously you would think that your book should be targeted towards your ideal customer. And that maybe that's something in there that, uh, you know, you should think about when you when you start thinking about your book. 
Yeah, and that's also something, it, surprisingly, a lot of people don't know who their customer is very clearly. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of a really tough part for some people. <laughs> and, and so that's where you start. You really got to dive into that and understand who, who you really want to serve. And it also is where I think it's important to have some sort of connection between your topic. I had somebody once who wanted to write a book about estrangement because um, she was estranged from some people in her family. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, she was wanting to get into corporate speaking. And I was like, there's, this doesn't connect. Like there, you, <laughs> <laughs> so having some alignment between your audience and your goals and where you want to go um, will, will be very useful. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I could see, I could see that. Yeah. I could see turning up for a keynote at eight o'clock in the morning at a conference to talk about estrangement would be a bit of would, <laughs> Yeah. stretch it's a stretch probably probably a strange probably a strange me from it <laughs> yeah, right. yeah. um and i but i think that's a great i think that's a great example though because i think sometimes it's very tempting to stray out and think oh i could do something really interesting here as opposed to stay focused on yes i this may not be the most interesting book i could write but this is the most effective one i could write for my audience and there's ways to make just about every book interesting. I mean, we have mm -hmm. our hashtag, you know, hashtag no boring books. We can take finance subjects and make them more engaging with creative kind of writing and, and creating a story arc. So there's even, you want to have an enemy no matter what, right? Like if you've got that enemy, you've got that obstacle to overcome, you can create a bit of a story arc no matter what you're talking about. And believe me, my background is real estate and finance. Um, we've had some subjects that are quite dry that we've been able to punch up and create that page turning feeling so that it's a book that you want to read, not feel like you have to read to get the information, but it takes work because some subjects just. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And, and tell me, um, interesting, is there any, are there any trends that you're seeing uh, like in the, in the length of books that think, you know, because I mean, we hear a lot now about people with attention spans and all of that. And, and once upon a time, um, I know when, when I was writing some books a while back, one of the things we wanted was to write, one of the books was to, so it could be completed on a flight from like New York to Chicago or something, right? So you could literally read the book in two hours or something. Um, but what are you seeing any trends around, you know, length of, or length of book and engagement rates and all that? Yeah. And I mean, so yes, the short, the short answer is the average business book used to be about 65,000 to 70,000 words. Um, I haven't seen stats you know, this year, but it is down under 60,000 typically now, I believe was, was the last number I'd looked at last year. Uh, but I can also tell you like from your perspective, if you're planning a book, mm -hmm. how to think about the length. And if you're, I mean, it shouldn't be longer than it needs to be. That's, you know, the rule of thumb. You don't want to pad a book just to get to a certain word count. But then the other side of this is going too short. Cause a lot of people are like, I just want a super fast read. Well, you don't want to look like a brochure, especially if you're mm -hmm. using this to create impact. And, you know, like we talked about shorting, shortening the sales cycle, because a great book can do that. Uh, so you want to have a book that has, you know, enough substance so you can put the title on the spine. Uh, so I usually recommend, you know, 35,000 to 55,000. But we have had books that are over 100,000 words that have sold great. And we've had books that were 20, I think 22,000 was the shortest. And it sold decently well, too. So there's no right answer to this. And it's mm -hmm. really right for the reader and right to give them the outcome that they need from your like that you can best offer them and you know make the book as long as it needs to be no and there's some and there's some that um and do some of your people um uh, tell me about the different ways that people leverage the books once they're published right because i mean sometimes they will you know send them out as as prospecting tools sometimes it'll be gifts to customers sometimes they'll do event. i mean what, what kind of things do people do with their books to actually drive business yeah, I love that you asked this because if you're going into this thinking about your book as a tool, you will be way more successful than the people mm -hmm. who go into this and think I'm going to sell books. Um, your book is a tremendous tool for exactly what you said, you know, give it to your clients as gifts. If you're a speaker, now you have different ways to monetize your speaking. If you're not getting paid, maybe they'll buy a book for everybody in their audience, or at the very least, give you a table at the back of the room and you can sell books. Uh, and you can use it when you're speaking as well to you know, get contact information for people. So now you can build that relationship with them. Uh, and then going, like one of my favorite things is to, to actually take the content in the book and repurpose it. So there's excerpts from the book that can make great articles. There's, uh, you know, the content can be great YouTube videos. You can repurpose it into courses, workshops, you know, 
all of those things. So you put a lot of work into thinking through the material. I like to reuse it over and over again to grow your brand further. I'm always directing people to some sort of reason to connect with you or get on your email list and really use it that way. And it can be really, really powerful. Yeah, no, abs- absolutely. And I think it can. And I think that's where the real, uh, if you go into it with the right idea, as we said, I mean, everybody loves to you know, write a book that sells loads of copies. But I mean, I think realistically, when you're writing a nonfiction business book, you should see it as a tool and you should have, here's here's how I'm going to use it and here's how it's going to make a difference. Um, because let's face it, I mean, the average sales for for um, for business books are, you know, it's not huge, even for successful ones. Yeah. And I mean, even my book, my first book that went to number one overall on Amazon, uh, you know, it, sound, it sold, I think, like over 5,000 copies in a short mm-hmm. period of time. Yeah, which is um, really but, good. you know, yeah, it was phenomenal. And it was a self-published real estate investing book to go to number one and be ahead mm-hmm. of Dan Brown and Game of Thrones. That's great. But, you know, the reality check is Oprah didn't call. Ellen didn't, you know, ask me to dance with her. You know, <laughs> really, like not a lot changed, even though I was at the top. Uh, so Sales are great, but you, you know, using it as a tool was really more beneficial. You know, we raised a lot of capital, our trading companies, you know, we were filling and filling all of our workshops without working very hard to sell them. You know, things, there was a lot of other benefits that, you know, not that I, not that I take away that number one, because that was pretty awesome. Sure. <laughs> yeah, no, it was fantastic. It's fantastic. And, 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 and the yeah. reality is uh, the reality, just to put it in context, the reality is most, most, um, non-fiction books or non-fiction business books sell three to five thousand over their lifetime not exactly. not in a couple of months so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just just want to put julie's uh, success in some context for you yeah well and i i wish i knew how to get other people's books to number one on amazon but you know lightning just kind of <laughs> hit and i had some great supporters and yeah but it's it's not something i expect to happen again <laughs> <laughs> But like you said, I mean, it, it's great when those things happen. But as we said, it's 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 as if not more important that you understand that the book has many different uses. Um, because yeah, ego wise, you know, we'd love to. Oh, royalty checks would be great. I listen. Um, I've seen royalty checks, and I've seen royalty checks for other people who've written books, and um, you know, that ten dollars isn't gonna like you're not gonna retire on that. Uh, no, and especially traditionally published authors, you're lucky if you're making a dollar per book sold. So you can do the math on how many books you're going to have to sell before it's really a worthwhile payday. Yeah, and I think that's a good point just to uh, uh, just maybe to finish on about the difference between traditional and and uh, and self publishing is because I think people sometimes miss miss the idea. They think, okay, well, if I'm if I'm picked up by a publisher, yeah, it, it's great. It's great having that name recognition and all that's fine. Um, they think, okay, well, they're going to invest a lot of money in me and push me. They may not. They may not invest literally any money in you. Uh, and you may end up, which I think a lot of people discover, you end up doing all the marketing yourself. And you're like, wow, well, what happened here? I thought the I thought the publishing company would do. And if they do give you any money in, in advance, yes, it's an advance. It's not a gift. And they're going to claw that back. Yeah, exactly. And one of the pieces a lot of nonfiction authors don't pay attention to, but I think they should, is rights and royalties, or not just royalties, but rights. Um, It's your intellectual property that you're giving them, and they can do whatever they want with it, and they can limit what you do with it. So, uh, you know, a lot of nonfiction authors nowadays are going, you know, I want to, I want to keep this, I'm going to use it for courses, I'm going to repurpose it in other ways, I want it to be published internationally, or have the audiobook, because a lot of times the publisher will have all the rights to all those things, but do nothing with them. Yeah, yeah, or the or they'll say yes, it can only be in in hardback for this amount of time, and it exactly. Can only, yeah, and and I think the so I just wanted to bring up that point because I think it's a very valid one that uh, people you know who are considering this need to understand that if you're going to be doing if you're going to be doing a lot of the marketing yourself, if you're going to be investing in the marketing yourself, and you have a good idea and you want it to get to mar- you want to get to market quickly, then you know self publishing is a very very good way of doing that because the other thing about traditional publishers is you're operating on their time frame, and you know you could write your book in November and then they'll say that's fantastic we're going to release it in January in a year and a half's time because that's when we feel like it's the best point for it so therefore you've made, done all this work and you're waiting a year and a half for the book to come out it is that is so much more common than people realize there's often the book will be done for six to eight months mm-hmm. like completely done cover designed it's ready to go and you're just sitting there waiting <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that's an excellent point where self-publishing, you know, it's done. You can release it whenever you want. You probably should still have a pre-sale period, but it doesn't need to be six months long. 
Yeah, and that's why I think that's why I think it's important when you're if you're thinking about book publishing is really to examine the pros and cons of going in in both routes. Uh, I think that personally, I think nowadays, you know, the the self publishing route is a very very good one, especially for business books, especially if you're trying to establish your, yourself and. And, and credibility and just a warning if you go the other route with traditional publishers it's a long long um, you know think of like it's like auditioning for a movie role you know they're getting so many people pitching them all the time that you're competing you know you're competing against a lot of other people and uh, as we said they don't move particularly fast <laughs> yep <laughs> it sounds like you're speaking from experience <laughs> just 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 a little bit <laughs> um, so, um, so in in finishing, like all the Julie's information is going to be below this uh, video. But just in finishing, Julie, do tell people if they have a book idea, um, what's the best thing for them to do? We, uh, contact you, and uh, what's the process? Yeah, the best thing is head to uh, booklaunchers.com forward slash business book, uh, just all together business book, and that will get you a downloadable really workbook to help you start laying the foundation for a book that will be set up for marketing success. And if you have questions when you get that, you'll get my email address when you download that. So you can just hit reply to that and you can connect with me that way. Excellent. Uh, again, like I said, I think everybody should, if you have an idea for a book, check it out. Uh, and I would also crunch the numbers and look at and see, you know, that, uh, you know, that you have enough money to invest also in some marketing on the back end of it. So you don't have, uh, you don't have this great book and then aren't able to do anything with it. Uh, but listen, Julie, this was great. Thank you so much for your time today. Yeah, thanks for having me, John. All right, my name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine Pipeliner CRM. See you all for another interview really soon. Thank you. Yeah.